the Sam Simpson Show, a program about Connecticut people and compelling issues. Make it a point to drop in every week. It's something that we all aspire to, personal and professional excellence. It's easy to dream, but not so easy to implement. Today, author and personal empowerment consultant Karen Hines talks about her seven strategies to achieving distinction and what you can do to start today. In our second segment, it's one year and counting to the 2012 presidential elections. If the elections were held today, who would win? Attorney Corey Brinson and former GOP chair Christopher Healy join us for a chat. Then we'll wrap things up with our relationship guru, Pastor T.C. Brantley is here to tell us why a very high-profile wedding was doomed for the divorce. You know who I'm talking about. But first, the power of distinction seven strategies to achieve distinction karen hines now how did you get welcome how did you get into personal empowerment business first of all what's your background i started out working for an organization in boston and love the idea of helping people to achieve their dream but not only doing that but helping them to build a career and build a personal life that supports that as well so this is back over 13 years ago but building these skills for distinction they're an actual skill set you have mm -hmm. to work at it. it doesn't come you aren't born with it you have to work at it, you right? have to work at it. I think people think you, this happens overnight. We have an overnight success and how everything seems to go well for certain people. Well, these success strategies are available to anyone and we developed seven of them because it's not just about making lots of money and making sure you're doing the right things. It's building a holistic lifestyle that supports your personal as well as your professional aspirations. Why that's so important for the person who says, listen, I just want to get paid. Forget all the holistic stuff. Mm -hmm. what, what about the holistic part of this thing adds value to your life. I think it's important to mention longevity. You don't just want to make a lot of money now, although I'm sure it's wonderful. <laughs> Let's not get ridiculous. So <laughs> it's always nice, I'm sure. But it's important for us to think long term, what kind of legacy we're leaving for other family members, and building a life that's not just about financial riches, because it never lasts. It always goes up quickly, comes back quickly, and you want someone who can live a long life, enjoy it, and make an impact impact not only in their life but on the society as well staying power staying power all is right. what it's all about so you break these categories you break these seven strategies into two different categories mm -hmm. one the foundational or the functional yeah the foundational, foundational strategies, strategies yes. yes one we have and uh, mike you drop that down the screen operate in your natural talents that is so important that basically means do what you love right do what you love and get paid for it was even better right but i think we have a lot of people who are in jobs that they don't enjoy they're miserable to work with because if you're stuck with someone who don't understand what they love they make your working life really miserable see so nothing worse than working 80 hours a week yes. doing something you don't enjoy but right? getting paid a lot right but going home stress and you're sick all the time mm. so when you love what you do it's so much easier to be creative you can handle the problems better because you will find problems in life but it's also about making sure that you do what you were supposed to do on this earth mm. you all have an assignment we all have it make sure that you complete your assignment so operate in your natural talents not somebody else's do you find a lot of people are afraid of their talent because it sounds simple right follow your passion follow mm -hmm. your dreams but most people don't. I would guess probably less than 10% of the people out there mm -hmm. are doing what they love to do. Why is that? Why aren't people following their, their true passion? People are not following their true passion because one, they don't believe in themselves. Mm, why is that? No, because they haven't been taught. They haven't been taught that you have a dream, you have a talent that's uniquely yours. They're always looking to the next person. Well, what's that person doing? How can I be like them? And we need to stop mm. that. You have something that you are good at and you need to discover that. But it's going to take time is going to take effort it's not going to happen overnight and they run away from the hard work of it all probably the most important thing in life is finding out what you really what your gift what is what you were born to do all what right. is that gift after that you have respect and honor family how does that play I into can't this? emphasize that enough I think what does we, that mean it really means recognizing that family is important and that no matter how successful you are when you're on your last days of this earth we never ask for how much more money we can make mm. we always want the people who we love they want, we want them around them so you want to make sure that you're respecting the family members, even those who are going to drive you up the wall, <laughs> especially Thanksgiving is coming ways. up, yes. <laughs> but it's recognizing that they're different. You don't have to like everybody, but you have to respect them and honor them. And it let keeps them you humble. Keeps keeps you, keeps you stable. humble because you don't want your head to get too big. All right. Personal policies and procedures. 
You're talking about a little, a little sort of a road map for how you're going to yeah, live life? What does that you? mean? Yeah, what are, your, what are your rules? I mean, companies have vision statements. They have mission statements. What's your rules? What are you living by? What standards are you living by? Socially and, and professionally? Socially, professionally, Why emotionally. Does that help you? Because when you're in difficult situations and you have to make decisions that might be ethical or unethical, mm. you're going to have this inner personal policy and procedure that you've designed for yourself to say, you know what, I need to make this decision because this is how I operate. It's very important. And right? that's important. We only have to look at the news and see what's going on right now. So many people have made decisions that really go against who they are. They say one thing and do the next. Now, how about thing. that? What happens, though, when your professional procedures conflict with your personal moral compass? All of a sudden, you're two different people. Mm -hmm. Your personal life, you do some things that you wouldn't do in your professional life. What happens when you have that disconnect? That's a conflicted person. <laughs> yeah, but are there, aren't there a lot of folks who are that way? There are a lot of people who are like that, and it's important to get the two aligned because your personal power drives your professional success. And it's important to get the two aligned because that's going to determine how high you go professionally. You might succeed for a while by separating them out, mm. but after a while they're going to catch up with you. So a personal code so, of conduct that crosses over mm -hmm. your professional life yes. and your personal life. You want to be the same person. You don't want to have split personalities because you want to make sure that you're the same person and you're the one who are delivering value and you're being ethical and you're being this powerhouse, not two different individuals. Don't you get exposed eventually if you are having those two lives at some point of light shines Something brightly will catch and up to you. people start unraveling Something and see what's going on. Something will catch up to you. Right? You know, there's an old, old saying, whatever is done in darkness come will to always light. come to light. So All right. get it together. You're going to preach to us now. <laughs> All right. Real quick now, about a minute left, the essential strategies. You talk mm -hmm. about now professionalism as yes. far as now, again, these are the strategies for the power of distinction. Talk about professionalism, building professional acumen uh, networks. Why is that important? That is important because people do business with those they know, like, and trust. And you can have the best degrees, and you can have the best credentials, but if you don't know how to build relationships and present yourself in a polished way, it's going to be very difficult to excel. Where do you start? Some folks are introverted, they're shy. Where do they start? They want to go out and make some friends, but they're a little intimidated. New environment? Get out of your comfort zone. Take one step. Go to a networking event. Take a, a class on building your self-esteem. Go, um, go to an event that you're not accustomed to. Uh, take a dining etiquette class. There's so many things that you can do to begin to get to yourself out of that comfort zone and try something different. But these are the things that are important to build to be professional. All right, I want to go to the next three of these now. Five through seven, we have about 30 seconds left. Quick comments. Communications. In important, any kind of leadership situation, you have to be able to, to communicate. And not just verbal, written skills now have fallen by the wayside. Quickly now, the importance of communicating. Uh, know how to sell your ideas, know how to convince people, and know how to impress and influence people. The elevator conversation. Elevator right? speech, yes. Uh, followership. What is this? Followership. Okay, Followership. follow the lead. Okay. Too many people want to be a word? leader. It, I Follower. made that. I'm, I'm gonna check that one out. You better check that one out. Followership. <laughs> but you can't be a leader unless you know how to follow. Right. Everybody wants to be a leader, but you have to be able to follow directions, even when you don't like them. All right, Karen Hines. One more. Learn to lead yourself and then others. Good point. A lot of folks think they're leaders, but they're yes. no followers. How do you begin? Real quickly. How do you begin to lead yourself and manage yourself? By making sure that you are the best person that you can be. Making sure that you admit, admit when you're wrong and correct your course. So start with you first. Then you can tell other people how to become the best person they can be. Quick website where they can get a hold of you. I'm sure Powerofdistinction.com. I knew you had a website somewhere. We're going to get you out again. Thank you for your time, Thank you Karen very much. Hines. Appreciate All right, it. folks, when we come back, we'll talk about the 2012 presidential elections. Now officially 12 months away. You are watching the Stan Simpson Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, too. Who wins? This election is held right now today. Who do you think wins? Don't, don't go away.